All right. Uh, I'm Ryan McKinley. I, uh, I work at a hydroelectric turbine company, but I'm actually a software developer. Um, my history is more working with pretty small, early stage startups, and I'm working here as something new, but my, I'm really committed to the idea of working in open source and sort of doing things open source by default. Um, when there's no reason for it to be closed source, let's just push it out there. People may use it, they may not. So that kind of explains a bit of why some of this stuff takes the path it does. Um, but to give you uh, just an idea of what the company does, we build a, 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 a turbine to generate electricity. It's a different model for a turbine than you're used to seeing. So typically you've got a, a wheel that spins. This tries to convert that into to being able to capture more flow out of lower head sites. Um, with the result of being able to have kind of equivalent amounts of power production with uh, less environmental consequences. So, you know, with five distributed sites, could you capture a similar amount of, of power out of an environment without, uh, you know, destroying it too much? So, um, so I started working there. We're working on a plant. This is in Oregon. Um, uh, and show up, here's this thing. We've got a UI for it. I don't know if you guys have seen industrial control UIs. They start to look like this. Now you want to see some new things. We add, a, add another. Oh, wait, need some buttons. So let's add some buttons to it. We got, oh, here's some more. We got to have our state machine. Oh, man, this thing's kind of a disaster. So I go to try to figure out what it is. We're, we're in this thing called uh, RS Logics, which is a, it's a, a, it's, it's a mess. I don't know. So you have to open up some, some Visual Basic. Take Visual Basic, write it out to Influx, send it to uh, Influx, and then you graph it in Grafana, and like everyone's really impressed. So now you've got some much, much uh, easier to deal with graphs. So this is something showing you how servos are moving around to keep things on target. Um, so now everyone, the whole team's happy. They're like, wow, that's amazing. Um, but then they want to start seeing some other things. So uh, here, what I'm showing is we have a bunch of security cameras showing the operation of the plant. So it's like, oh, let's graph those along with what our uh, hydraulic systems are doing while that's going. Um, so I built that. This is my very first introduction to Grafana, was like, how, how can I just have a simple thing? So we made a, a very simple Ajax panel. That was my introduction, and published that. Um, so our team loves it. They get really excited about this, because now they can, I think previously, we had this very expensive platform from Alan Bradley that would write to a SQL database, and people had to run a script and download that, run some processing to be able to see what was happening. And we replaced that with uh, very simple things. So the next thing people want to see is non-time series data. So for us, we, we care a lot about what's, what's the efficiency of our machine at different stages. Um, so uh, non-time series. So this is something where you put it in with normal, um, sort of the standard, uh, Influx queries um, and select, I want to see markers, say which fields you want on the x-axis versus the y-axis. And again, this was published. These are sort of published to the degree of they work for me and I'm, you know, few other people are using them, but my goal has always been, hey, Grafana's built some great tools for us. How can, you know, there's no reason for me to keep this there. Our business is not building a graph, so let's get it out there. Um, so now we expose this to our team, and uh, they start going crazy. So we get these graphs. I don't know if you see this last one. I couldn't even paste this in, because it said it was too many pixels. Uh, which, there's this brief moment where Grafana like, only lazy loaded the panels, and things were great. Things were, things were going really well. I think that one was like, it was like a thousand parallel uh, influx queries in that. So t it's taken a bunch of training. All right, so we did that first plant, and now uh, I've been there for some time. We're starting a new plant. This one's in uh, Oregon, or rather, this one is in uh, uh, Freedom Falls in, in Maine, so way up in the north. It's really cold. Um, it's kind of, it's not off-grid, but it's, you know, internet connection's pretty poor. It's, it's a different thing, but we have an opportunity to do some new design. So with that, we took, uh, oh, I'll, I'll show you two things. So there's that project. And then meanwhile, because this is a turbine under development, there's a lot of things we're learning about it. So this is actually our office in Alameda. Um, so you see San Francisco in the background there. So this is our office. It's one of these hangars that was the old uh, naval air station there. So we're building this uh, test facility that pumps water through uh, 
um, through this thing and runs it through that like turbine area up there. So these are two projects that are happening now, and along with this, here's a picture of the actual new turbine development and a close-up. So along with this, we got a chance to update kind of the whole control system and platform. And with the experience we had had with Grafana early on, I, I pushed a lot to, to really use Grafana as our UI. So uh, we essentially switched everything out, and we get this opportunity to kind of, this is, I like this picture. This was kind of our old system, and this is kind of our new, uh, the new. So this is the, um, so uh, some of the key things we needed was how do we deal with this remote monitoring? So if you've got a plant that's in uh, Maine with very limited internet access. We need our engineers to understand what's happening it, with it, but we also need to be able to sort of, you know, how do you start it, how do you stop it, set power levels, set power, power targets. Um, the other key thing is our, our, our needs keep changing all the time. So the dashboard, dashboard as a platform was super useful because, you know, whatever needs you have are really easy to just switch them around. Uh, the key issues we found with just our, our off-the-shelf Grafana and Influx was zooming around. You would build these dashboards that work great for a very short time scale, and then people would zoom out that dashboard with the, uh, you know, 1,000 queries. They would zoom it out to see the last six months of activity, and that was, you know, surprisingly didn't work very well. Uh, so the other part was, uh, you know, we have in the actual controllers, there's units that are really important to them, and sort of keeping documentation in sync for, like, this is the unit that we're using in code. How does that make its way all the way up through the chain without uh, futzing around with it? Um, so with these, you know, essentially through the plugin infrastructure, we were able to kind of tick off all the boxes. So we have a, a custom data source that calls Influx. We uh, sort of we read all the variables out of the PLC, publish those, and work out from there. And then we've published various. We have a bunch of internal panels. As long as it, along with some panels that we publish. So, you know, this is not rocket science as far as our uh, infrastructure. So we've got a plant. Uh, it's uploading uh, data to, a, um, to influx storage. The S3 is really it's saving off, like, the variables it knows about, the units that go with them, uh, what roll-ups it has, uh, a bunch of configuration stuff. So normally, sort of our... Uh, Analytics is just looking at that kind of detached from the online system. And then, obviously, again, not surprising, sometimes you connect straight to it and you have a live uh, sort of web socket stream to get the immediate uh, variable. So that's how we do direct control. So you'll probably care a bit more about, so the, the controller we're using is this thing, uh, it's Beckoff, is a, um, they're a German company that make a, it's actually a Windows IoT container that has a really good uh, interface for talking to its real-time variables. So it has a, it's a real-time clock, but you can talk to it and get, uh, get variab variables out of it pretty easily. So we have a C-sharp program that reads what's on that, keeps track of what those things are, publishes a list like this, a custom, um, this is what the, so it's a Visual Studio-based thing. So this is a real-time clock running at each cycle is 10 milliseconds, I think. Oh, I was earlier, uh, yeah, 10 milliseconds. So we made a custom data source that reads that JSON configuration, and uh, here, here it is. It was a, just a panel that sort of lists off what each of our fields are, tells us what um, uh, sort of what period they change at. So either the things that we're reading at, you know, 10 hertz, 1 hertz, uh, 50 hertz. Is it something that's what the real is? Um, uh, what units it's in, which you, uh, so the comments that came straight from the, the real-time code. Um, it's also kind of, we use this to then pop up information about kind of our internal documentation for it. So every variable links to, um, you know, what part it is, where it's wired to, um, what we expect the voltages to be. And then the influx side of this is those are really like variables that depending on how we're asking for it, we can either ask the PLC directly, we could ask for a short-term query, we can ask just a simple, you know, uh, give me the mean of the last, uh, you know, within a short time, that's a fine query, otherwise you want to pull from a different uh, aggregate. Um, the other kind of key panel that we did was just being able to control individual fields. 
So this is a panel that reads that data source. Um, I'll give you a quick, no, I'll, I'll, I won't complicate things with trying to demo you. I'll just show you some screenshots. So this was essentially, you configure a list of fields that you have, which features you want on them, but we want a way to be able to say, okay, I want to change my request speed. So you tell it which RPM you want to run it, and that writes that out. So this is a configuration that lets you pick the various fields out of our system, uh, shows various information about them, and lets us work with that. So the other kind of main thing that we needed to show was the state machine transition. So as the machine is running through different uh, processes, we, we need to know, like, does the, you know, is there electricity to the whole system? Is the loop running? Is the pump going? What, uh, what processes do, do these go through and how do they relate to each other? So for this, we built a panel that's essentially previously we had graphed a whole bunch of fields with ones and zeros and tried to make an influx, uh, tried to make a Grafana panel, but that didn't work very well to try and represent states. So this is a pretty simple panel that shows the sort of discrete string values as a um, series of, of uh, um, on-off graph um, and published that. Um, the next one is obviously documenting, because people looking at this don't know what those states mean. Like, if I'm in an initializing, what does that mean? What does it go to? So this is pretty simple, walks through your states, so you're in running, you can tell as you're moving from state to state. And these are, all, all again, all based on the same queries, the same data source that we're all used to. Um, FFTs was another big one that we needed, was uh, uh, Understanding the health of the system is based a lot on vibration, so understanding the, the behavior in the frequency domain. So this, likewise, is a modification of that uh, Plotly panel that I showed, that uh, this shows over time, we can see where our key resonant frequencies are and can zoom in to specific times across, across that query. Um, the next kind of custom panel that we have is about faults. So this is in industrial control. There's, there's alarms that we have that are within the raw Grafana. So we can say, you know, this field has gotten close to this level, send us an email. We have another class of things that, that operate entirely in the real-time environment. So, you know, if vibrations spike, we want to turn off, you know, within 50 milliseconds. So that's not a Grafana thing. This is a internal to that, but we use Grafana as our UI to manage what all of these things are. So each of these has a configuration to tell, tell you um, this is a fault, at what temperature, if the temperature gets too big, do we shut it off? Um, so here's a screenshot of a few of these things together. So we see this is, I think the, someone hit the e-stop, so the whole thing is shut off. This is our test facility. Um, you can see other things where we have faults that uh, something happened, we're in a condition that's okay, but you have to say, okay, we, we understand that it was okay. As you click it, it, it uh, goes bad. So you see that a lot of this UI here is like, I find stuff in Grafana, copy it, and then the styles change slightly, so it looks a little, looks a little funky over time, but uh, you know, we'll get there. Um, so we've kind of, we, we have used Grafana in, uh, like all over in the company. I'm actually not going to show you everything we have, but this was one that our engineering team liked even more, uh, strangely, was uh, uh, a lot of people use NX. So you have these licenses for NX, which is a, a solid modeling uh, software package, but it's really expensive, and so we're always passing back like who has which license when. So we're graphing that over time by who has which license and showing you who's got licenses checked out at the time and can see where they are. There's this button at the top where you can say, I want that license, and it sends a Slack notice to everyone. So people are, pre people are pretty excited about that. Um, um, the other thing that I'm starting to use this in is we recently uh, acquired a company that's, we're working with a company called Upstream that we do uh, uh, machine, uh, machine learning on kind of environment data to try and um, minimize water use overall. So this does crop monitoring. So there's things that we're looking at land from satellite imagery and uh, checking out, in this case, you know, when is it irrigated, when is it not irrigated. Um, so this has some simple graphs in it. Um, part of, another part of what I've done is trying to do power estimation monitoring. So if we put a plant in this site with these 
conditions and these expected flows, how much power would we produce? Um, but the problem with that is you end up making these crazy graphs of like, okay, we're gonna have six engines, they're gonna be in parallel, how much they make. So I'm looking now at how can I use, how can I embed Grafana graphs in this other product? So sort of, uh, you know, taking the, the iframe element a little bit further. There's some issues here, but uh, we'll get there. Um, let's see, here's, here's what my plugin panel looks like. So there's quite a few of them, I think. Uh, Daniel's is probably worse, but uh, um, so another panel that we have uh, published is the Influx admin one. So Influx is great; we use it all the time. Uh, they recently removed their admin tool, so um, I sort of added a very basic tool to it that lets you type in a command, see the results, click on them. Also, another one that will sort of automatically update and show you what the long-running queries are. Um, so this one's published as well. Uh, again, recently published one that this is uh, the USGS, so the United States government publishes a bunch of data about water usage. Um, it's kind of in a funky format, so uh, made a plugin that you can go look at these. This one's kind of interesting because unlike all the other data sources, this one you can connect to and there's like no credentials, there's nothing. It's just you connect to it and it works. So, um, so there's that. Uh, I was going to give Daniel trouble that it wasn't published for a long time, but it got published yesterday, so that's exciting. Um, uh, so I went through this quick because we're at the end of the day here, um, but I really want to thank uh, Grafana because you guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, I can show you, I can show some demo, whatever you want. Uh,